Hello, my name is Mario Fanech from the Alonso Estebanova Laboratory, and it is my pleasure to be part of this 2021 postdoc research symposium to talk about the contribution of the indole acetaldoxine pathway to oxygen biosynthesis in plants. Let me put forward this imagination exercise. You are having a walk somewhere nice, looking at the astonishing landscape that surrounds you, and out of the blue, you get trapped in quicksand. You cannot move. Night comes, temperature drops, mosquitoes swarm, and on top of that, you are starving. The following day, before being thankfully rescued, sun hits your head for four very long hours at 40 degrees Celsius, making you extremely thirsty. Can't you imagine living a life like that for the rest of your life? Well, this is what plants go through every day of their life. Plants are sessile organisms and as such, environmental conditions very much influence their growth and development. They cannot escape the cold and snow in the winter or find the shade in the summer. So throughout evolution, plants have come up with different strategies to cope with adverse conditions and keep on with their life cycle. Just like humans, plants count on a wide menu of regulatory molecules called hormones. In the case of plants, phytohormones. These are a crucial part of a whole set of tools that allow plants to adapt their life to such a changeable environment. Oxin is a phytohormone involved in nearly every aspect of plants' life, from embryo development to fruit ripening. Importantly, it's not only about having oxin, but having it in the right place at the right time and at proper amounts. In fact, artificial oxin 2,4-D is extensively used as a herbicide to get rid of undesired weeds, and I bet that your favorite weed and feed product you use for your lawn contains 2,4-D. So follow me in this. Oxin is fundamental in every step of plants' development and their adaptation to environmental conditions, but it is also used to kill them. Therefore, if too much or too little oxin is deadly for the plant, a diet regulation of oxin levels becomes crucial. Elucidating the molecular basis by which plants maintain this diet regulation is critical to our understanding under what conditions a plant thrives or dies. Hence, knowing how plants make oxin is a fundamental step forward. While we know a great deal about oxygen transport, perception, signaling and response, our knowledge of oxygen biosynthesis is still very limited. The current model of oxygen biosynthesis, to which our group has significantly contributed, is presented on this slide. It is now accepted that plants make oxygen using the amino acid tryptophan that is converted into indole-pyruvic acid intermediate, or IPYA, after which this branch is named, and eventually to oxygen indolacetic acid, or IAA. But there are parallel routes that remain poorly characterized and their contribution to oxygen pull in the plant is very controversial. We know that when tuning down the main IPYA branch, plants show low oxygen traits, and when it is tuned up, they show high oxygen traits like leaves pointing upwards but bending downwards that we call leaf epinasty. There were several reports published over the years that suggested the possible involvement of these other gene families in oxygen biosynthesis but the firm proof for that from a genetic point of view is still lacking. We can rely on the plant traits associated with high or low oxygen levels, also known as oxygen phenotypes, to test the involvement of these candidate gene families in oxygen biosynthesis. We knocked out, or switched off, each of these genes one by one. The expectation is that if the candidate genes are contributing to oxygen synthesis, then their mutants, with genes inactivated, will show low oxygen defects. However, when we switched these enzymes off, no changes were observed. We did the same for the following steps of the pathway and still did not observe any changes. We even crossed these mutants to sensitize mutant lights in oxygen biosynthesis, hoping to enhance the phenotype by combining multiple mutations in the same plant, but we could not detect any oxygen phenotypes in the new mutants. What does this all mean? There are several possible interpretations. It might be that these gene families do not contribute to oxygen synthesis under standard growth conditions, but we may have not fully resolved the gene redundancy in these families. This means that a gene of interest is not the only one with a certain function, but instead that it belongs to a group of genes carrying out the same activity, hence being called a gene family. In this regard, we have recently resolved the redundancy issue for the all gene family by the last one. Currently, we are working on the identification of higher order mutants involving all seven members of the last step's gene family. After years of work, we expect to identify the acceptable mutant in the next few months and hopefully resolve the long-standing question of the role of the IPYA independent pathway in oxygen biosynthesis. I want to thank all the people involved in this work, the principal investigators for all the mentoring and support, and current members of the lab for making my recent incorporation to this team easier. Thank you for your attention.